What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So hopefully everyone out there ha had a fun weekend. Here on the channel I had a chance to do a couple of videos which includes a look at Microsoft's leaked plans for their next generation Xbox, and even a gaming handheld that is pretty cheap and can play Game Boy Advance and PlayStation games better than I was expecting. So check those videos out if you missed them. But today we have some interesting stuff to go over when it comes to Nintendo's next generation platform as it appears some job listings that were discovered that could be pointing to a pretty big feature heading to the system. And we'll also be talking about a disastrous launch for Payday 3 and Unity. We got their response as well as an update for their revenue sharing, but is it too late? Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. Helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. We're going to start today with Microsoft and that Activision Blizzard deal valued at nearly $70 billion with the big hang up right now being the CMA. Well, now we have a response from the CMA when it comes to some of the, some of the restructuring of the deal that Microsoft has made, which includes spinning off their cloud stream rights to Ubisoft to handle. And it appears that there is now a pre-approval in place by the CMA for this deal. We can see this posted up by Pure Xbox. This from the CMA saying that it considers that the restructured deal makes important changes that substantially address the concerns it set out in relation to the original transaction earlier this year, which hopefully means we are almost done with the entire Activision Blizzard Microsoft saga. It's it's been more than a year. It's felt even longer than that. But the fact that the pre-approval is in place and they're expecting a final decision by October 18th means it could come obviously before then, tells me that this thing should be wrapped up Yes, before the end of the year, but maybe even before the end of October. I know there's still a lot of other stuff that has to get done considering how big this deal is just to make sure everything's in writing and, and then money gets moved over and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, finally, looks like we're getting close to the light at the end of the tunnel for this one. Also, we did get a pretty big announcement for Legend of Heroes fans out there from Tokyo Game Show. And there was a full trailer that was released as well as screenshots. You can see some of that here. And this is for the Legend of Heroes Trails through Daybreak. This is coming to the West just in summer 2024. Uh, from what we've seen so far, we're still waiting for that exact release date, but it's coming to the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC. Now, this is a game that people in the West have been waiting years for, as it did come out in Japan uh, on the PlayStation 4. That was in September of 2021, and then it also went to the PS5 in 2022, so just last year. But fortunately now, it's finally coming to the West, and it, uh, again, the, the, the Legend of Heroes series still runs in that situation of there being just so many games you would want to play through to get the context of the story that's going on. Even if, like, for example, apparently this one is starting a new story arc, there are still references and characters and other things that will pop up that you would have more appreciation of if you go back and play all the other games in the in the series. So it is something that's tough to really get into probably now, but fortunately the other games are all readily available for the most part. So you can really jump in from the start. And, and I guess technically you could jump in this one and just, and you know what, it's fine if I don't recognize that character, but I'm sure plenty of people in the comments below will tell you where you should start realistically understanding that there, are, there are a lot of games to play if you want to get to this one coming out next year. Oh, and we did get another update from Nintendo when it comes to their Switch Online service with the Game Boy Advance selections. We can see this posted up over on Twitter where they say call in red, yellow, and green Kirby to help you solve puzzles and take out baddies in Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. This is coming to Nintendo Switch expansion pack members on September 29th. This is a good Kirby game. It is, and uh, I think at this point now, with Kirby uh, and the Amazing Mirror going in next, or this week, I think what golden sun is like one of the last ones left and then on the n64 side i know there's still mario party 3 1080 snowboarding so we are coming up to the end of that roadmap that they had placed previously in front of us and it does make me wonder what their plans are after they've run through that will they give us another roadmap maybe for next year going into their next generation system or they're just going to kind of play it by ear and occasionally just drop random games out of nowhere so We'll see. But hey, look forward to Kirby later on this week. It is a really fun 2D platformer. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Nintendo and their next generation system that all of us are still calling the Switch 2. But I'm sure Nintendo will call it something weird just to throw us off. We have been getting little bits of information here and there, whether it's a... Uh, 
apparently tech demos and stuff that they're showing behind the scenes at Gamescom with the Matrix or job listings that appear to be pointing to different features that are currently being tested for this new platform. Now, this is something you can follow along with DocTray81 over on YouTube, and there'll be a link down below in the sources to the video in question, but you can see it titled here, and this is Nintendo Switch 2 HDR update. Now, what exactly is happening is DocTray has been noticing different job listings that are up and then being pulled down, which could mean that you know they've contracted or figured out who would be filling that role, sure. But at one point, a job listing mentioned testing. So the Nintendo display with different functionality with different TVs and brands. And then a more recent one mentioned tone mapping. All right, so these techniques, of course, would tie it directly to HDR. I will point out that I mean, technically, when you're testing it with different brands and TVs, you could be testing the, the system's ability to handshake with it when it comes to docking and undocking. So what effect does it have? Because I have noticed that sometimes different TVs will, for example, turn on when it's docked, some won't. I've had some that where sound won't work. It's just different brands or even models. So wouldn't shock me if they just have someone testing or a bunch of people testing just different brands, just putting the switch in and out of the dock, right? But HDR is something that I feel like Nintendo should have with their next platform, and it shouldn't be a surprise. It should just be expected at this point because like all the other systems just have HDR. Many TVs now that you buy have HDR. Is it good HDR? Well, that's another question, but for the most part, it's at least expected to be in many TVs that are being shipped and sold. I'll say at more reasonable, a more reasonable price tier, like the hundred dollar TV at Walmart or something. It's like the little, you know, like 19 inch one, sure. But if you get like a TCL even that's 300 to $400, those have HDR. Again, not great HDR, but it is still present. And what's really interesting is I, I think HDR would play in nicely to the art styles that Nintendo tends to leverage for their games, whether it's Legend of Zelda or Mario. I mean, really they're, they're very colorful uh, art styles and HDR I think would make those pop really, really well. I don't know if it's something that they would utilize in handheld mode. I'm gonna say probably not, considering right now it's rumored to be using an LCD screen, but there could still be multiple SKUs. I feel like that is a possibility where there is an OLED, uh, an OLED handheld system and maybe it's used there. Otherwise, I think this is something that they will just use for TVs that have it equipped. Of course, I'm sure you'll be able to turn it off and on and, and what have you there. But there is one other thing that seemed to be making the rounds and I just wanna, point out a few issues here with this. So this is a tweet that started to get brought get brought up on different forums and you know, social media, and you can see it here. And this is from uh, what Revo Gamers, and they made a tweet talking about this, this latest game. Uh, it's uh, Freaking Dinner, that's the next from Celery Emblem. It's responsible for Brilliant and will come to Nintendo Switch and also its successor as its creator has confirmed to us. So I feel like if you are making a game, if you want some advice right now, like, a, like an indie game or something, and you want some publicity on it, just tell everyone you're also targeting Nintendo's next generation device. Don't say if you have a dev kit or not, anything like that. Just say, yeah, we're also gonna be putting this on the next system, the Switch 2, uh, the NG Switch. You actually use that. It, People think it's code name right now. Uh, and in that case, you probably have people talking about it. Doesn't necessarily mean you are actually working on it at that time for the next system, just that, yeah, I have it in mind. Hey, when the next system launches, I'll be there in line right away for a development kit that Nintendo can ship out when they've made them available to us. So I don't know if I put too much stock in like indie dev smaller developer, smaller studios that aren't as high profile and would be working directly with Nintendo, thinking of Ubisoft, Capcom, Square Enix, uh, but smaller developers, they're probably not working on Nintendo's next generation system for their games just yet. But again, free publicity, so go ahead and tell everyone you can with your smaller indie game that, yeah, we're also working on one for the NG Switch. Next up, let's talk about Unity as they did issue a response and an update around their revenue share model, which the original one that they proposed came down to however many downloads or installs are happening on the user side. And they even got to a point where they said, oh, they'll be self-reporting. Like the, the people will just say, oh yeah, I, I did download this or I did install this and there won't be any fudging of numbers or reports there. Well, Okay, we'll, we'll see about that one. But they have at least backtracked and introduced a more favorable 
revenue plan, I'll, I'll say. We can see this posted up over on their website where they say uh, the Unity personal plan will remain free and there will be no runtime fee for games built on Unity personal. We'll be increasing the cap from $100,000 to $200,000 and we will remove the requirement to use the made with Unity splash screen. No game with less than $1 million in trailing 12 month revenue will be subject to the fee. Now they do move up and then talk about like Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise, but the big one here, I'm sure that people are wondering, okay, if they're not doing the download or install split where however many installs you have is how much money you have to pay, they have now gone to the revenue share model once again. For games that are subject to the runtime fee, we are giving you a choice of either a 2.5% revenue share or the calculated amount based on the number of new people engaging with your game each month. So in this case, you just take the lower one, obviously. And I assume here, they're just trying to show people that the, the pay per install or pay per per download is feasible because on paper, it sounds like a terrible idea, but it's also in the sense that if you are part of the Xbox Game Pass or PlayStation Plus situation where you are paid a lump sum to just put your game available and then people will download it. Yeah, the 2.5% revenue share probably makes more sense in that case because you got money, a check from Microsoft or Sony as it is, and whatever money obviously then comes in from sales would get that split for, for Unity. And from my understanding, the 2.5% revenue split is actually very good when it comes to like game engine, uh, revenue share and all that. But the thing really comes back to, is this something that people are just like, you know what, I, I'm i out with Unity. I, it's not really something I'm going to chance in going into my next game that's going to take me five years or something to develop. They did mention that all of these, all of these changes will go into effect on the next update. I believe that happens in early 2024. So anything that's already been worked on and is ready to launch even in 2024 uh, will not be affected by any of this because they've technically already agreed to it when they were setting things up and working on their game. And for those titles that have already made deals with Microsoft and Sony, I'm sure that's that's great news. But Again, I do have to wonder, are people going to stick with Unity or even approach it at this point after seeing them not only shift the revenue model out of nowhere, but then also backtrack and like, it's it's an unknown thing right now. So maybe go with one that's a bit more known and a bit more trusted until they do it Unity just, I, I don't know, we'll see what happens with Unity going forward, but they've definitely tried to backtrack and make things more favorable question is, will it work? Next up, let's talk about Payday 3 as it had one of the most disastrous launches I've seen in a long time for a game because it pretty much reinforced the major concern people had going into this game's release. So Payday 3 was essentially unusable uh, for about three days since it came out, the entire weekend, because you have to connect to the servers in order to do any kind of matchmaking. Even if you have a lobby that has four people filling it, which means you don't actually need to matchmake and find anyone, it was still going through issues of calling to servers without, get it, without getting any kind of response or very late responses. For example, I was able to find a match after about 20 minutes or so of just waiting around. Now, this was on and off and sporadic. At some points, it took took five or six minutes, other times took the full 20. And it was, it got better and better as the weekend went on. But like, you can see this, for example, over on Twitter, this was posted up uh, 24th just yesterday. Matchmaking services are recovering and players are returning to the game. If you don't immediately get a successful lobby, give it a few minutes and then try again. And people are still wondering, okay, well, how long will this one last? Because this isn't the first time they've made this kind of tweet saying that things are things are looking good. It, it's uh, I'm not sure what's going on there because they've they ran like two or three beta programs for this game. You feel like they would have been ready for what was going to be an onslaught of players after it went live because it's also in Game Pass. So this kind of also ties into that service for Microsoft because people are trying to play it through that. Doesn't look good all the way ar around, right? So. As I had a chance to play Payday 3, which it did, again, it did work in times. I'm also still uh, a, li a little frustrated with the lack of content that appears to be there and it falling well below what we experienced with Payday 2 when it came to came to like the, the hideout that you had and the overall I don't know, feeling of the heist. It's, it's just not great yet. And that's the biggest thing is 
yet because I feel like this will be a game that evolves quite heavily over time and they eventually drop like a crime wave edition on us or, or something just to sell it all over again. But not a great launch for Payday 3 because the, there's so many games out right now. It's very easy to just say, well, okay, I guess that, that didn't work out. I'm just going to move along. And this being a live service game, they need a lot of players or at least concurrent players consistently playing it. So it's it's not good, but we'll see if maybe this week they get it worked out as, yeah, they're still having issues uh, Sunday night. My advice though, the biggest thing at this point is to add some sort of offline mode where you don't have to call to a server to play maybe a, a full party, or if you just wanna play single player, I, I don't really know why they have to have you connecting back and forth to these servers when you're just gonna play with bots anyway. And Payday 2 had that. So it's very odd that they decided to remove it because if it had that offline mode, there wouldn't be any issues at all. People would probably be playing with friends or playing with bots until they got the matchmaking stuff worked out. But because they opted for it being always online, it pretty much halted the entirety of the game. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about DECA Police as it did get a pretty big update at Tokyo Game Show. Now, I still have some questions around this one, one big one, which we'll get here in a second, but some of the footage that they showed, they just basically sat down and played it live from what I can tell. And if you were at Tokyo Game Show, you had a chance to just demo it on the floor, which is, it's pretty cool that there were actually quite a few demos and hands on time that were being had by people. And then of course they could write up different previews and, and all of this, but you can see some of the footage here that was shared for DECA Police. And the first thing I noticed is they go into a battle and at the end of the battle, they do arrest the person. That's kind of the idea, but it's like active time base. So basically, yes, you do sit around, wait for a bar to fill up, and then you can make your attacks or different moves and stuff. But something that was interesting, it seemed to really lean into the idea of some of the social aspects and yes, the detective side more maybe than I was even expecting. And so you're going to want to definitely check out some of the footage before picking this one up. And that is the other big question. Uh, when is this coming out? Because it still says 2023. We're about to be in October. And apparently at being asked at this event, they were kind of like, well, you know, it's still 2023, but uh, I, I think most of us understand at this point, it's coming out in 2024. My question is, when is it gonna come out in 2024? Because something like February, end of January, beginning of February, really starting to fill up. And there are actually a number of other RPGs kind of sitting in that month already. And I see this as a very important release for level five. One, they, they have been struggling a bit with things like Yokai Watch Shore over the last couple of years, but this is a new intellectual property for them. And if they can launch and have success with this, it could be an entire like a series that they just run with. And they can of course turn it into all kinds of other forms of media. They can, they can do anime, manga, I'm sure figures, all kinds of merchandise. So this, this should be very important for level five. So it, I'm hoping they have that at least worked out in the background for its release and it doesn't get kind of crowded out by more popular titles, things like, uh, like Persona or Like a Dragon. But I guess we'll wait and see, at least from the footage that they were showing off, the game looks very, very interesting. And uh, I, especially like kind of the, the setting that they've presented here. So here's hoping they find a good slot for it in 2024. And before we go to the comments of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday where I ask, do you play games on a TV or monitor that has HDR? 68% say yes, 32% say no. And that's the big thing now is a lot of TVs will just advertise HDR. Might not be good HDR, but it's still there on the box. So there's a good chance that if you've bought a TV in the last, honestly, three or four years, you have HDR in some capacity. I do see people though in the comments say that they just turn off HDR because it looks kind of weird. And I think it comes down to like the brightness for the TV, for example, and, and all that. And for, for me, Good HDR is is very impressive looking, especially when it all lines up correctly with the, the, the system that you're using, the game, sure, the art style, all that. But if you do have a TV with uh, below average HDR, it can look kind of muddy and just off. So it, that's a big thing to obviously take into account. But yeah, I, I fully expect Nintendo to have HDR enabled, at least when docked. 
not necessarily in handheld mode, but who knows, maybe we do have an OLED SKU as well. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Game Clips who says, as a longtime fan of the Payday games, my expectations for the launch of Payday 3 were low, yet I was still extremely disappointed when I was unable to play for the entirety of the day. They knew that a lot of people preferred to play solo in Payday 2, yet forced everyone to be clumped together in servers that weren't capable of handling the load of players. Yeah, and it gets worse when you remember that people, some people paid like what, $80 or so for it. And to be fair, they seem to have an okay time when it was in like that early access or the, the actual release uh, period. But even then, you, you figure that, that the publisher developers would have had a chance to look at that and say, okay, we're already kind of hitting our limit with these early access players. Maybe we should open things up a bit more when that, again, Game Pass and like the onslaught of players opens up the floodgates. They just didn't seem to be ready for it. And they weren't ready for it th this entire weekend, I guess. It's, it's very weird stuff to see it from the outside looking in, but the offline mode would have absolutely saved them. They really wanted it to be always online, I, microtransactions or, or tracking players. Or, I'm sure there's a lot of plans they have in the in the future for all that kind of stuff. But it's definitely unfortunate because it is a game that can be fun when it's working and you have the right people together for it. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's all this Switch 2 information getting out there online? Are you expecting HDR for the next system? Let me know. And then also, what about Unity? Backtracking with some more favorable revenue splits, but is it too late? And then Payday 3, are you someone who experienced all the issues and server outages online over the weekend for the title. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.